Welcome back to For Your Child's Health. With me this morning is Dr. Bert Lubin. He is Senior Vice President of Research for Children's Hospital Oakland. And right now we're discussing curing childhood illnesses and the latest breakthrough research. I'm going to jump right to the, some, it's in the headlines about um, stem cell research. I mean, it's very controversial. You're not doing that there. You're doing something else, non-embryonic. Okay. Explain to me. I'll be happy to try to do that. So non-embryonic means that we're using stem cells that are isolated from the umbilical cord blood or from the placenta. And we've just discovered that we can isolate large numbers of stem cells from the placenta. Since both of these tissues are normally discarded, none of the ethical questions or concerns are raised by doing this. And yet they're as effective. We know the cord blood cells are extremely effective. In fact, our program and many others in the United States have demonstrated that you can cure diseases like sickle cell anemia and thalassemia with a stem cell transplantation. Okay, we have to roll back just for a second because sickle cell anemia is, is a huge, uh, is a blood disease that affects the population uh, as well as thalassemia. And just give me a brief background on that before we jump ahead to how <coughs> we cure it. These are blood diseases. In the case of sickle cell anemia, it causes the red blood cells to undergo an abnormal sickle-like shape. They stick in blood vessels. They cause organ damage, stroke, and severe anemia. In thalassemia, children don't make blood cells because of a genetic defect and need to be transfused monthly for the rest of their lives and given a drug to get rid of the extra iron they accumulate as a consequence of the transfusion. So they're both severe diseases that require a lot of medical care and that shorten the lifespan. And so the idea here is to stop it before it becomes a problem? So we have started a program where we collect the cord blood from a brother or sister of a child with this disease and if it's similarly matched we transplant them and indeed cure them. I've been working in this area for 31 years given a lot of lectures and when people say have you ever cured somebody now I can say we've done that. Okay this is unique. It seems in medicine you're always fighting that battle of trying to at least deal with the symptoms. You're talking about eradicating this, curing the individual and po possibly in future generations not even having this as a childhood illness. Normal life after a transplant, a cure of the disease. No longer have sickle cell anemia, no longer have thalassemia. It's a dramatic impact on these families and it cures their children. And we're talking about, this is not just a fragment of the population. I mean, how many people are affected by sickle cell anemia? Well, there's anemia? a significant number. Uh, in the United States, over 100,000 patients have sickle cell anemia. And in California, there's a very large sickle cell population and we have a major program on sickle cell anemia treatment at the Children's Hospital in Oakland. Okay, and thalassemia? Thalassemia, there are fewer patients in the United States, but throughout the world, there's an enormous number of patients with this disease, and we're hoping to bring this technology that we've developed to help children throughout the world. So you're thinking pretty big here. Yes. I mean, you're obviously, you're treating children primarily in the Bay Area, proper Northern California, but this research, you're hoping that that it will somehow be used in other countries? And we, we believe that that's the case. And in, in fact, many countries that are underdeveloped don't have funds to provide regular care. So children die at a very early age. And if we can develop these programs and help these countries do it, they will cure these children. So we treat locally and heal globally. That's a mighty lofty goal. It is. I think we can do it. Um, you know, and I, I, I just, you know, a lot of people, the naysayers would say, you know, look, what you can do in a Petri dish, in a test tube is one thing, or, but to really apply it to human beings on a, on a mass basis, come on, that, that's not possible yet, is well, it? We pride ourselves in taking the basic science that we're doing in our laboratory and bringing it to help children and adults throughout the world. And, and again, this is your apply, This is on an individual basis. Kids can come in, they, they're being treated, they have the transplant, and what's their success rate? The success rate is about 90%, 92% children are cured following this. 
Sometimes the transplant doesn't graft, so we have to do it again. But for those that engraft, 90% of these children are cured. They're remarkable, cured. And again, just the process is, is stem cell research, but not using embryonic cells. This is just uh, right there in the... Well, in our, state, in our state, we have uh, Proposition 71, which is support, supposed to support transplantation of stem cells or treatments of stem cells to cure. This is a good example of how that proposition will help these children. Very exciting news.